Hello everybody and welcome to Quora Top Stories. With us, you can hear the top real time stories put by a real person wherever and whenever you like. And we are doing a whole series on amazing and interesting cop stories. Want to hear the fun stories involving a police officer? Stay tuned with us on the series of cop stories in Top Quora Stories. And today we are here with another amazing cop question. Hope you guys will like it. The question goes like. As a police officer, what is the scariest thing a suspect ever said to you? James Feeler Bellow, police lieutenant, retired, titles his answer with dark side posse and says. I'm not sure it was the scariest thing, but it gave me some reason to pause. As usual. I was working street crimes, and had finally arrested a target I had been after for a very long time. He was about 25 years old, and was the admitted leader of a street gang named, The Dark Side Posse. This is his story. The Dark Side Posse was the first street gang we experienced in our city. Sure a few biker gangs had some ties to our city, but this was the new type of drug gang which recruited kids, and teens to do their dirty work. Similar gangs, would some years later, become affiliated with one of the national gangs, like the Bloods, or the Crips. However, at the time, they were the first and only gang and were just local. The leader was a fairly intelligent guy. He, in fact, had a full ride scholarship to a university on a basketball scholarship. Unfortunately, he was already involved in the family business of dealing drugs. He was caught with dealer weight during a car stop and did a little jail time. That was the end of the scholarship and getting out of the neighborhood. At one point I decided to talk to this posse leader. So I parked my car on his corner, and just sat there, which was bad for business. He eventually came out, and asked what I needed to leave the corner. Almost a bribe offer, but not quite. I told him, I needed him to stop selling drugs on that corner, and to take his business somewhere outside my city. I told him that, I knew that he was using kids to move his product, and just because he screwed up his own future, that didn't give him the right to mess up the futures of these kids. Boy, did that piss him off. He told me point blank that, this was his corner and he would sell drugs all he wanted, and I wasn't smart enough to catch him. He also made a veiled threat about, making sure I was taking care of my own family, and how easy it would be for him to come visit my neighborhood. This is not what you want to hear from a drug dealer, or gang leader. I wondered how he made the correct assumption that, I had a family, and then I realized, I was wearing a wedding ring. I took the ring off that night, and never put it back on. I vaguely explained, lied, to my wife, that it was an undercover thing. From that day, I made it my mission to catch this gang leader, and user of children. I came up with a plan which would involve the transfer of a number of officers. The chief bought into my plan, and set up round-the-clock walking patrols in just a four-block area, making drug dealing in his immediate neighborhood impossible. Boy, was I popular with the officers who had to leave their air-conditioned cars, and walk beats in the heat of summer, especially as they were not aware of the overall plan. Using a good confidential informant, I got my target to move to a location, which was good for audio and video surveillance. We actually recorded him completing drug transactions, and taking money, then signaling to a child on a bicycle to deliver the drugs. I took my evidence to a grand jury, and got a multi-count sealed indictment against him for leading a drug distribution network, and employing juveniles, in the distribution of drugs. Bail was set at a staggering $1 million, full cash. This was unheard of in this area in the 1990s. I wanted his arrest to have maximum impact on the neighborhood, so I had the state police team's unit to execute both a search warrant on his house, and make the arrest. About a dozen highly trained troopers, in special raid gear, crashed the house with machine guns, and he was in custody in less than a minute. This team was awesome to watch in action. Once the house was secure, I went into the kitchen which is where my dealer was seated, with his hands cuffed behind his back. I said to him this is a multi-count sealed indictment, and warrant for your arrest. Your bail is one million dollars cash. I looked at him and he was shaking. His eyes were wide, trying to make sense of what was happening to him. Gone was the cocky thug, who thought he could intimidate me, and all that was left was a criminal, who looked scared to death. 
We stayed in the kitchen for about 15 minutes, but no other words were spoken between us. He just kept quietly shaking, and looking down at the ground. We finally got the word to take him outside, and I realized the reason for the delay. As we exited the front door, cameras were snapping from the press and we were on the front cover of several newspapers. I think they waited for the press to arrive, and did what is now called a, perp walk. He went away to prison, unfortunately, others took over his drug trade but the dark side posse, collapsed without a leader. It seemed things between us were now okay. I would read later, that he got mixed up in some kind of organized crime hit, and may or may not be in either witness protection, or prison. I don't ever expect to see him again, and that's a good thing. A brilliant college guy who had scholarship did all this. He could have been a lot better person but he chose drug dealing. Sometimes you do things that is not meant for you and you have to learn, I guess. Wonderful story though. We are now up with another answer. This one is from Glenn A. Marin, former lieutenant, RAT, at Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, 1964 to 1984, and he says, Realizing that, said, maybe more than, voice, the most cold, hard stare I ever received scared the crap out of me, and I was armed, the suspect was not. And we were in a room with several other deputies. He was a later 20s ex-con, who I knew, plus his two brothers, who had been raised by two doper parents, who were both in prison. I had had numerous contacts with them, always in terms of arresting them. These folks were hardcore, the two brothers were killed in separate incidents, as they made deadly attacks on deputies, one had already been killed at the time of this identification. And I was present at that incident. Anyway, he was arrested for a felony warrant, by a distant patrol station from my assignment, and he denied his identity. Because I knew him, I was sent over there for an ID. I both ID him and talked about his brothers and the history of the family, which I am sure was very painful to him. As I kept talking about the history of him, and his family, he looked at me and gave me the coldest, don't have, with me anymore, stare I have ever received. Showed my blood. I shut up, I had accomplished my mission. This stare was a hard con, prison level warning, that could only be disregarded at the risk of your life or a real serious injury. That's all from Glenn A. Marin. And yup, yeah, that's true. Some time looks are enough to take the shit out of person. Anyways, for those who have short-term memory loss problem, let's revise the question once more. As a police officer, what is the scariest thing a suspect ever said to you? Carl Franklin, Leo, 14 plus years retired law professor and author says thanks for the a2a ricardo gonzalez there was a report of shots fired at a local strip club i was the second unit on the scene arriving within seconds of the first we quickly assessed the exterior and then went in the back door calling for other officers to take the front of the bar as we got inside we could hear the man screaming at people and it ends up he took four hostages. He had hustled them into the manager's office near the kitchen, just a few feet from where we came through the back door. The door was cracked and we could see him occasionally walk by it with a rifle. It appeared to be a, Ruger Mini 14, which fires the .223 round. Only one person had been hurt so far, and that was from flying glass from the plates. The man shot it early in the confrontation. The scariest moment was, when we called to him to tell him to surrender. He said, don't come in, I've got a bomb. This was within the first five minutes of our being on the scene. We had the place secure, nobody in or out, unless we knew it, so there was no need to panic, so to speak. My blood was pumping, though. We secured the scene for the tactical team, and the hostage negotiator. 20 minutes later both arrived on the scene. In the interim, the first officer and I, had done out best to scout the room, identify his weapons, look for signs of a trigger device, or a bomb on his person, and generally be the eyes and ears. 
of the TAC team commander, until he arrived. In the end, the first officer and I were released from our station near the office. Heavily armed and shielded tactical team members took out place. We were assigned to the command post to help with any information we had. Within 45 minutes of arrival on the scene, the hostage negotiator managed to confirm there was no bomb, get three of the four hostages released, and convince the shooter to surrender himself. Ten minutes later, the man was taken into custody by the TAC team members, who had taken our place. The situation was over. That is all from Carl Franklin, with his, bomb story. Though the suspect, in this case, did not have the bomb with him he could have it, who knows in front, and this of course pumps your blood. Good story Carl. Let's move on to the next answer. This one is from Scott Randolph. He is a former worker of law enforcement. This is a short answer but I think is the scariest. We don't have the whole story, but with just, what he had given it, sounds disturbing. It goes like, I just cut up my father, and, used him for fish bait, at Bayou St. John. And he was telling the truth. Sad scene. He was in a straight jacket, and we were on our way to Toro Infirmary M3, third floor, mental ward, with him, because he was so violent. Whoa, killing own father, and using him as bait, that's a real scary thing. Actually hardcore, I should say. Some people are so messed up. Maybe he had problems with his father but I even can't think of such big problems that you had to kill him, and, not only kill him but also use the meat, as a bait. That's even impossible to think of in my view. Well that's all for this episode of Cop Stories. I will catch up with you guys in another video. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more amazing, wild, and spectacular stories from Quora. If you guys have more interesting stories, especially police officers, please share yours in the comment and I will definitely put it in our upcoming videos. See you guys!